All right, so this will be the final uh, tutorial on the vector logo project. And this one is just after you've done all the work and you've created an EPS that is a black and white and an EPS that is a color. These are your vector files. These are what you can use to send to a vendor to make products. And they can be brought into Photoshop to be outputted at whatever resolution you want. And if you bring them in as a smart object, they will uh, automatically rasterize to whatever the native resolution is you give it for the project, whether it's a billboard, whether it's a postage stamp. You can add layer styles that will also rasterize up with whatever the native resolution is, like the texture here. And you can add effects like drop shadow, strokes, all of that, uh, both in Illustrator or strokes and gradients or in Photoshop. The difference between Photoshop and Illustrator is that in Illustrator you can separate the color for each element where you see the, the gradation is separate for each element versus overall. But in some ways I think the, the color solutions in Photoshop are a little bit more elegant, at least for basic, very straightforward black shape logos, which are the most versatile. But I wanna change gears a little bit because when you're actually providing something to a client, you wanna show them the options altogether. And often you'll be surprised at what those options really are. So let me give you an example. If I open up, for instance, this uh, project that I'm working on. Here we go. And I open it with Illustrator. Okay, so this, There we go. So this is a logo for a pedagogy conference for my, for my college campus. And I want to provide it to them in a variety of ways. So a few things to do to make something print ready for a client or for um, a vendor, like a t-shirt vendor, a, a printer, any kind of fonts you use have to be outlined. Any kind of strokes you use should be outlined so that the entirety of the image really is um, completely filled paths. And you always want to give one solution that I call a one ink solution. And so I save that up at the top. And that's what it looks like as an EPS to them. One ink meaning that if you only have one color you can print with, whether it's white ink on a black shirt, on a blue shirt, whether it's black ink on a, a, a light gray shirt or a white shirt, you need to have a design that works and scales and is flexible that's all just one color. That's, that's the most versatile, the most useful. But very often they'll want it for identity purposes. So for instance, you want to give them the option and even build in space if you can, where they can, or they can have uh, employees do it, <laughs> where they can add text underneath. So I have the option here for pedagogy conference, but that is actually all outline text. It's not um, a specific typeface that their computers need to have to read. And it's just a suggestion because they might want to put in 10th annual pedagogy conference or 10th anniversary or whatever it might be. And I give a variety of options here, you know, outlined with black, uh, with color, with a gradation on the color. But you see how they're all separated out in layers. Then you have your color options, right? And colors, in this case, I really need to take the colors from the school's identities already. So this is from the school mascot, the Nighthawk. Their colors are green and blue. So that blue is the official blue, you know, uh, obtained from the, the public relations office of that school. And then you can play with it. You can say, okay, what about that blue with, you know, everything else outlined? And you can say, okay, what if I want green? 
instead of the black. So now we have the school colors, the, the official green, the official blue. And I can say, well, do I want uh, black outlines with those colors or do I want blue? And it can be hard to tell what blue's doing with a gray background. So sometimes I like to build in a background image, like a blue shirt. And then you might add gradients. All right. And you can see those gradients happening. I'll turn off the background. I usually like to add an offset. So a little white space around. Sometimes I'll add a white outline, right? So white space, not just around text, but around uh, the light bulb light as well. And so I'm adding school colors and I'm liking it and it works with a, a colored outline. There's no black in this design anymore. Or with a black outline, that reads pretty well. In fact, in a lot of ways, I like that more. But then the, the other elements, the subtle, subtle gradation there is nice. The subtle gradation there is nice. But this feels empty now and, and ill-considered. So you might want to fill that in. You might want to have your radiance have color. You might want to have your bulb itself have color. And this is done with a layer of, of you know, a flat color layer and then a gradient and then another gradient overall. Make it really subtle and help that center brain, which has kind of a white highlight in the whites there, um, be more of a focal point in the design. Then you might want to use a gradient for the bulb stem. And I like this element because it carries the L through to the stem of the light bulb, like this campus really is plugged in. And then you might have a slight gradient around the light bulb and around the text, which would help it show up on a white background as well as on a, a gray background or dark background. So you can see that here, how that gradient outline helps set it off a little bit. It's all very subtle. And this gives a whole lot of options all in one file. You know, whether you want that colored rim or the black rim, I like the color. Um, whether you want the blue outline or the, the black outline, I think I like the black outline. And then one trick that I have, which just outputs the EPSs, so there's some space. So for instance, when I open up an EPS, you see how there's space at the edge instead of it being cropped right to it? Well, in order to do that, this is the method I use. I have no idea if it's the best method, but I make a layer. It's the only layer I leave unlocked in my EPS. And it has locked layers in it that are turned off. So as bizarre as that is, but what those locked layers are, are just a space behind. I use a little rounded rectangle, but it's a little space behind and as long as I have that layer unlocked, even though the individual elements within that layer are locked and turned off, then the EPS will generate with that space in it. Otherwise, it will crop right to the edge, which is still a fine and usable EPS. It just doesn't look as good to the client on the computer screen. Now, these EPS files, these are the, the different ones I'm going to use. Let me go ahead and, and number them in terms of their use. So zero is my one ink. I already have that somewhere. Let's see. So one ink black. But it takes a while to come to these solutions. You know, look at all these different options I play with before I figure out, okay, what are the the options, really no more than five that I want to give the, the client to use that all have clarity, you know, and all make sense for the project. It's tough. Now I'm questioning if you need that green on the outside. But I, I think yes, otherwise the gradient's too strong. All right. So I have an, uh, just black ink 
like I showed you at the beginning of this, I have a black ink with white, though you can't see that here because it's already on a white background, but it's basically the black design with the outline of white all around as an offset so it can be printed on dark surfaces. I have the, the grayscale version, right, which uses all the gradients with the black and white, but notice there's no color inks involved. So if you're gonna use black and white ink, you also have the option without any extra expense of gradating it out. And it depends on what the vendor is doing, whether that has to be uh, outputted as half tone dots or whether that can be kind of seamlessly printed as in like a, a black and white memo. Then I have the black with color. So this is a one color solution, right? It's one color because the color is green, but it's actually three printing inks on any surface except for printing on a white surface, right? So the three printing inks would be black ink, white ink, and green. And then you have the full color option. And this is something I'm debating, whether I wanna take out black entirely. I think I might redo this one and have the NLC be in black. So that's one change I might make. And so how would I do that? I would simply take my color outline, I'll make a duplicate of it, Command C, lock it, make a new layer above, paste it in place, so I can make this edit. And really the only change I wanna to make to this one is I want to subtract the NLC from these blue outlines because it's actually um, not just outlines, but a gradient as well. It's a blue fill and a gradient. Let's take it out there. This is where it gets a little bit trickier. Ah. See, that's where. So I'm going to have to use an eraser to separate these shapes. As long as you understand Illustrator, all this can be done. So I'm going to use an eraser. And because this is the only layer that's unlocked, I can separate it that way. And then select there and delete. And select there and delete. Remember, there's a gradient and a fill. And then I can go back to here and just smooth it really quickly. It's right through there. All right. <coughs> That's why using layers as an organization tool is so helpful so that you can easily find the layers you want. That's why I like to use the lasso tool here because it gives me all the layers within that area that are unlocked. So I can delete them quickly. And then the in, this doesn't overlap with anything I want to keep, so this is a little bit easier. All right, so nice clean design. Now I simply have to turn on the black. All right. <coughs> I'm going to call this Save As. I'll say black and color outline and fill uh, inks. And this one's going to be number five of the options I give them. Don't give them an option that you wouldn't be happy for them to use. That's the number one rule working with a client. If you give them an option that you're not happy with, that's the option they're going to choose and you're going to be disgruntled. So try not to give them options you're not happy with. And if they have a change to make, you're never really able to predict what changes they want. So it's best to just put your, your best effort forward and then let them decide. Okay, now, as tricky as it is, I want to then output those with the background. 